So why do we study the behavior of discontinuity? This is because in finite volume scheme, we are always treating even continuous functions as having tiny discontinuities, right? So we are, in, in our previous lectures, we have been treating the function, which is unknown to us except for the tiny volume averages, as piecewise constant functions, right? So we have been looking at a function, for example, that is continuous with shock waves as piecewise constant, like over here, piecewise constant, piecewise constant, piecewise constant, and piecewise constant. We have been looking at solutions like that. And we, we want to look at discontinuities like this and also like this, right? To figure out how should we evolve them. So we have seen that if we use the flux reconstruction that is like the average, we'll be doing pretty good over here. If we treat the value of the function as if uh, at the interfaces, as if they are the average of two nearby volumes, uh, it does pretty well in continuous regions. But if you treat the flux here as the flux at the value here in the middle as the average, we will produce oscillations near shock waves. We have also seen that if we upwind the scheme, we get first order accuracy, but we are doing well in shock waves. And in last lecture, I want to, I had a bug in the code. Uh, let me see, I have the DTT final volume. So I have bug in the code that, pr that actually uh, doesn't work in general, but it actually turns the upwinding scheme to perform correctly, is the following. So I have only considered the case where speed is greater than zero and speed is less than zero. So, so let's go through the code again. So we have uh, a solution. We produce the x and uh, the volume size dx. We compute the flux of the Burgers equation u squared over 2. And we also computed the characteristic speed inside each volume. And then we produced the speed, which is the speed of the little discontinuities, little or big discontinuities, right? So this is the formula for the speed of a shock. And then the special case is when the solution are pretty much equal so that we get a di division by zero, right? Zero divided by zero. And we want to avoid that by setting the speed of this special case to be the characteristic speed. All right, and then we compute the flux evaluated at the left cell and the flux evaluated at the right cell and we want to combine them depending on if speed is greater or less than zero but i missed the case where speed is actually equal to zero here i'm practically setting the uh, the flux when speed is equal to zero to zero which is wrong right okay so the correct thing to do is to take one of those to be to be uh less or equal to zero or you can add a third case saying that is the average of FL and FR when the speed is equal to zero. But when that happens, uh, the finite volume scheme we have won't work anymore. I just won't run the code and we can just uh, see that, that if I have a solution, if I have a solution that is equal to minus one when X is less than zero and plus one when X is greater than zero, what you have is f is always equal to half, right? And fl and fr is always equal to half. And if I didn't have that bug, then f interface is also always equal to half. I had that bug which makes f at the interface at one single point to be equal to zero because speed at that point is actually equal to zero. Okay, so if I didn't have that bug, bug f interface is going to be it's always going to be half and when I perform this difference in F interface I would get zero du dt for the entire interior so what I would have is I would have if I started from a, a discontinuity that is minus one to one right x and u if I have a discontinuity like that the discontinuity the non-physical discontinuity is going to be maintained as opposed to be spread out as a, as a fan. 
So this is a uh, uh, this is the possible non-physical solution I get when I use a pure upwind scheme. So the correct thing to do is instead of just the upwind the flux, we should be looking at what the flux is for a discontinuity. So what does it mean? What I mean is that in this particular case, we should be looking at what is the behavior of this discontinuity physically and evaluate the flux as the flux of t plus epsilon. Right, so if this is the solution u at t, what is the solution at t plus epsilon? The solution at t plus epsilon would be physically would be a constant plus one with a tiny with a tiny uh, interval and a huge slope, right? And then the flux at this point should be half of u squared and the u at this point, not at t equal to zero, but t equal to epsilon is actually equal to zero. So the correct flux at this point is zero, right? So, so basically, by a bug in the last lecture, I set the flux at this point to be zero, which produced the correct solution, right? But we should be doing that consciously. We should be doing that because flux equal to zero is actually the correct flux, which you cannot see if you look at the dis discontinuous solution, but you can see that if you evolve this solution for an even infinitesimal amount of time.